Let's get right to the site. Welcome in CBS Sports golf analyst Mark Immelman and Doug Bell who join us from Kiowa Island. Moving day was wild like roller coaster wild. I want to set the scene here for a moment. Phil had a birdie on 10. Put him at 10 under par in his past 10, uh, past 18 holes. The best 18 hole stretch of his major championship career. So he's cruising along until 12. Bogey there, hits his tee shot on 13 into the water, double bogey there, missed a short birdie put on 14, had to settle for par, then went par rest of way, including a great up and down on 18 to save par. Doug, Phil's lead was as big as, f as five. Give us your perspective. You're there. What was that like watching all of this unfold? Well, Hakeem, uh, I walked with Phil all day when I wasn't doing HQ hits. I was out there with him, and it was phenomenal. I was a kid again. I mean, this was this felt like a final round of a major championship, and the people were everywhere. I mean, Mark, they say it's just 10,000 people. It felt like 100,000 people were out there. And you're right, when he made the turn there, uh, birdies 10, golden opportunity 11, lets that one get away. 12, poor tee shot, cost him a shot. 13, a terrible tee shot, cost him a double bogey. And then at 14, golden opportunity to bounce back. Didn't get it done, but he did finish with five consecutive pars. And Mark, you and I were talking. I, I really believe at the beginning of the day if a little birdie had told Phil hey would you take 270 I think he would have said yeah I'll gladly take a 270 I think he's relieved didn't play his best but a 270 is pretty strong yeah he would have bit your hand off for 70 I'm certain yeah. and and I was with the group the Brooks Kepka Brandon Grace group which was just one ahead and when they went through 11 uh, Brooks didn't uh, birdie 11 the par 5 there was no real momentum with the Kepka group and you could hear all the roars from Phil and all the crowds in behind there. And you got the sense that, hold on, this is becoming a bit of a coronation. And then all of a sudden, this golf course just kind of did what this golf course does. The final stretch of holes are so demanding. They are so punitive and they're just so emotional in a way. They can sort of get under your skin so quick. So that double that uh, Doug talks about on 13, I mean, those are just really hard golf holes. And Brooks obviously kept the thing real with a few quick birdies toward the end. All right, so Phil has a one-shot lead on Brooks Kepka, who continues to battle knee pain, clearly rising to the <laughs> occasion, Mark. Uh, what did you see from Kepka that really impressed you in the third round? And even post-round, he wasn't all that pleased with his third round. <laughs> well, that's what impressed me about Brooks. He didn't have his best stuff and he still put together a really sound day and got himself up near the upper reaches of the leaderboard. Uh, today I spoke with him on the golf course. He said he didn't hit the golf ball that well. Um, it really didn't have the speed on the greens very well, but he made some crucial putts. And then there was one shot Hakeem, the second on the par 5 16th. He had something in the 280 range off an upsloping lie and he just laced this three medal into the heart of the green two putted for birdie and when I looked at this I looked at a guy I'm like hold on that knee can't be that bad if you're punishing a three wood that far in the air so I just like where the mindset is I like the game right now and he's sort of not playing that great and still has a chance to win for much of the third round it, it looked like uh, there was no way Phil was losing this and, and now battling to win it Doug uh, trying to become the first 50 year old to win a major championship. What has to happen on Sunday for him to earn his sixth major? <laughs> well, he has to control his nerves. And you say, well, how can a guy who's a five-time major champion get nervous? Oh, he will. And I think we saw that with the shots at 12 and 13. Uh, listen, the pressure was mounting there, even though it was the third round. And, and the one thing I noticed walking with Phil virtually all week, but especially today, I got, I got close. He's walking very slowly. He's taking his time. I mean, he's he's walking almost uh, to the point where he's stopping and then starting again, and he's doing these breathing exercises. He's stepping back from putts and approach shots, uh, taking an enormous amount of time. He's gone back to the conventional grip with his putter. No longer does he turn that uh, left hand upside down. It's conventional. The stroke looks really good, but I think the key for Phil Mickelson, again, just keep doing what he's doing. He's second behind Kepka and strokes gained approach shots. They're the two best iron players so far this week. Just keep doing what you're doing. And somehow, Mark, he has to control those nerves. Uh, again, uh, he's been there many, many times before, but even the great ones get a little tight. They certainly do. And for me, Hakeem, there's two things. Physically, he's got to continue to put the ball in play off the tee. And then he's got to avoid the big numbers on the card. That double bogey six he had on 13, that's a no-no tomorrow. Because even though they've separated him, themselves, him and Brooks, from the 
peloton a little bit mm -hmm. that gap can close very quickly we've seen that so physically put the ball in play off the tee and then mentally to doug's point he's got to double down on that focus you can see him he meditates before the round and he really is zoned in and he doesn't hit shots until he's ready and so a, a huge helping of that tomorrow to keep himself in the present to eliminate some of the white noise i think is what he's going to do because the truth of it is even though brooks is really popular Phil should have the lion's share of the fan support, so if he does the right thing, he'll get the galleries in behind him. It's really interesting to hear what both of you have said right there. Kind of a juxtaposition here because you talk about Phil Mickelson. It's a lot about his mental game at this point, and for Brooks Kepka, it relies a lot right now on his physical game. So really going to be interesting to see how this plays out, a wild juxtaposition going into Sunday. All right, before we get your pick to win, Mark, what do you want people to keep in mind going into Sunday's final round there at the Ocean Course? I want them to keep in mind that the golf course played as benign as what it could today because the easterly wind laid down, the wind started to come more for the ocean, and so the golf course really was quite gettable and still it was hard to score on and tomorrow the wind is forecast to come from the west. So that stretch of holes which goes basically from six all the way through 13 and 12 and 13 were hard today. Those are going to be straight back into the wind. The closing stretch will be downwind, but if you can survive those nine holes, holes six through 13, I think you're well on the way to success. And let's keep in mind, guys, we've been talking about a mano a mano matchup, right? Almost like it's a Ryder Cup. There's some other guys in the chase pack. Louis Oosthuizen had his worst putting round of the week. More than capable, a guy like Bryson DeChambeau, who's on the range right now, He's five back, so let's not just hand the Wanamaker to either Phil or Kepka. I mean, there's some other guys who could pull this out on a golf course where the wind's going to change, guys. It's going to be an interesting Sunday, especially that final nine holes. All right, to that point, Doug, who are you handing the Wanamaker trophy on Sunday? <laughs> I'm always the cautious one, right? Uh, I don't want to count anybody out. <laughs> but I really, I really think Phil Mickelson, uh, I think this will be his last hurrah. You know, with golfers, you never know when the last hurrah is going to happen for the great ones. You just, you just never know. Uh, for Nicholas, it was 86, last time he won. I think Phil, tomorrow will be his last hurrah. I think he'll get it done here at Kiwa Island. He'll celebrate another major championship, his second PGA. And I think it's going to be just one of those moments that we will never, ever forget. One of the greatest moments in the modern era of golf is going to happen tomorrow. I believe Ooh, it. Okay. <laughs> um, here's the thing. The romantic in me wants Phil Mickelson to win, but then the romantic in me wants him to win a Torrey Pines in a few, in a little <laughs> while's time in the U.S. Open right. so he can finish that career grand slam. So I, the, the, the romantic, my heart says, Phil, I'm not going to sleep on Louis Westhazen. But the truth is this. Brooks Kepka is focused. He has intent. He looks physically strong. And he just looks like he's on a man with a mission right now. And he's not playing his best. And he's still in contention. So my head is saying Brooks, honestly. <laughs> well, Brooks Kepka is the favorite going into the final round at plus 150, looking to win his third PGA Championship in four years. A wild third round producing a final pairing for the ages. Phil Mickelson, Brooks Kepka, our final pairing, breaking it down here for us on CBS Sports HQ. Doug Bell and Mark Immelman, great job all week there for us at Kiowa Island. And you want more awesome golf content? Of course you do. Uh, First Cup podcast with host Rick Gaiman and his crew. You'll get tournament previews, including DFS picks and analysis, round-by-round -round reaction to each PGA Tour event. Uh, you can also watch final round coverage of the PGA Championship on CBS beginning 1 Eastern time on Sunday. You can also watch on Paramount Plus as well. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.